Welcome in to another episode of Ravens Reports, man. It's your guy Noah here with For the Flock. As always, bringing y'all our top five news reports and storylines coming out of our Ravens today. We got so much to talk about. Literally like two minutes ago, I got a notification that Tyler Huntley is coming back to Baltimore after much discussion about the backup quarterback position. We got an update on Tyler Linderbaum and Mark Andrews ahead of this Ravens Chiefs NFL season premiere six days away. We also had Lamar Jackson responding to Peyton Manning the use of 12 personnel, which the Ravens are going to get real down and dirty with this year. We also got Bo Braid addressing the media today, talking about making the roster and his family crying and a bunch of other great stuff, man. I just want to tell you guys, uh, I appreciate y'all, man, the love and the support and the comments, the the messages, like everything, man. You guys are amazing. Um, I, I welcome you and appreciate you being part of the For the Flock family. I uh, truly mean it whenever I say I love you guys. And I appreciate y'all, man. That's I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, let's dive in to the content. At number one, Tyler Huntley comes back to Baltimore. We had this as a possible reality whenever um, a few days ago, I think last week, we did an episode of Ravens Reports. A report came out that the Browns, um, they kept four quarterbacks on their active roster with DTR, Deshaun Watson, Tyler Huntley, and Jameis Winston. We are like, there's no way they're keeping four. They were fielding trade calls for both Tyler Huntley and Jameis Winston. Nobody was going to trade them because they're like, dude, we know you're going to have to release one or two of them here. You're not going to keep four on the roster. That's exactly what happened. The Browns released Tyler Huntley. And now he's heading back to Baltimore, which is absolutely crazy because he's been the primary backup the last few years. He's beat out any competition that the Ravens have brought in at the backup quarterback position, but the Ravens didn't want to pay him. The Ravens were comfortable with Josh Johnson and didn't really have a lot of salary cap to pay Tyler Huntley the money that was offered to him by other teams. And Eric DaCosta said yesterday that, you know, the Ravens liked their backup quarterback position, but they wouldn't be um, unwilling to address it. And, you know, if, if opportunities came up, and that's exactly what Eric DaCosta and the Ravens did. I think they like Josh Johnson in the room as, like, the mentor, the coach. Like, basically, that's exactly what Eric DaCosta said. He's, like, having a second coach, you know, in the back of quarterback room. Um, I don't think they want to see him starting a bunch of games. I think that would probably go back to Tyler Huntley. And he, it's great because he knows the system. I think he provides some more upside and playmaking ability than Josh Johnson. Let me know. What you think about it in the comment section below? I know a lot of people were talking about wanting to bring him back. And number two, great news because Tyler Linderbaum is back practicing again, still in the red non-contact jersey, but it's great news that he's still back-to-back -back practicing before uh, this Kansas City matchup, man, because I can't stress enough how important having Tyler Linderbaum is in there, man. He is the guy that lines up the protections. He's um, a Pro Bowl player. He's a rock in the middle of the offensive line with some unknowns right now. The reality of the situation is the Ravens need Stanley and Linderbaum to be there and to perform at their best of their abilities uh, for the Ravens to have a solid offensive line. It's going to be huge in helping provide some stability with some other unknowns on the offensive line with a rookie in Roger Rosengarten or McCarry. The right guard situation is up in the air with Philele or Ben Cleveland. And the left guard spot with basically the rookie and Andrew Voorhees. Linderbaum is a huge part of the equation for not only Lamar Jackson to be kept clean in the pass game and have time to dish the ball downfield to his receivers and tight ends, but also for Derrick Henry and the run game as well. And it's kind of important against the Chiefs that have one of the best defensive tackles in football and Chris Jones, man. So uh, definitely important to have Tyler back. It's great news that he's practicing again. At number three, Another big addition is Money Mark. Mark Andrews is back practicing. It's been a few weeks now since that car accident. He, he had not practiced, and Jeff Cerebeck, uh put out a little nugget that it was looking like a leg strain because he had, had taken some limited snaps before um, the car accident and you know took some snaps off and was dealing with like a leg thing and then the car accident happened as well and you know he hadn't practiced for a little while i don't know if it worsened the leg if they just wanted to use it to make sure he he was fully rested and completely healthy for the regular season but uh mark andrews back out there is huge the safety blankets the playmaker the pro bowl tight end um for lamar jackson and speaking of tight ends and what the ravens are about to do to the nfl with the best tight end duo in the national football league i want you guys to listen to this little um interview from Peyton Manning and then Lamar Jackson addressing that interview 
Here's what Peyton Manning had to say about his tight ends in that 12 personnel package. Two wide outs, slot receiver, tight end. Who you got? I'm going to audible, which I used to like to do. I'm going to, I'm going to move the slot off the sideline. I'm going to bring in two tight ends. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going with Kelsey and Kittle right here. Right here. Okay. And now, and now you're in a bind on defense because you go, okay, two tight ends. I better bring in, you know, uh, our, you know, extra linebackers, right, and play our base defense. Well, there's no linebacker in the NFL that can cover Kelsey or Kittle. Right. So, okay, now we're going to bring in two DBs and play, you know, nickel or dime coverage. Well, those guys aren't built built to stop the run. Now we're going to run the ball at you. So now you got a major problem on matchups. Kelsey and Kittle make defensive coordinators have long nights, gotcha. right? I'm putting Justin Jefferson out there, out there on the right, right? I'm going to put Chase. Uh, on the left, okay. but chase on the left. Over, over Tyreek Hill? No, I'm putting Tyreek at running back. Put Tyreek <laughs> at running back next to me. So Lamar Jackson responds with this little gif here, and um, he says, at Mark Andrews, at Isaiah Likely, Derrick Henry, Rashad Bateman, and Zay Flowers talking about his little crew that he would uh, dream up. I love how he's uh, he's got his guys' backs, man. He's throwing some more confidence towards their way. And when you look at this group of skill position players that he just showed, it's a nice group, man. It's going to cause issues. We talked about 12 personnel several times, um, but I want to talk about it again. The ability of having Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews out there at the same time whether it's on the same side of the formation, whether it's on opposite side of the formations off of each tackle, however they want to do it, uh, have one in the slot or whatever. Um, whenever you trot out that 12 personnel package, and it's not just the fact that it's two tight ends, it's also the fact that the the one out of the one two of the 12 personnel happens to be Derrick Henry. You know what I'm saying? So it's Derrick Henry and then two tight ends. You got to be prepared for the run there or else Derrick Henry and these tight ends will absolutely run you over. So if teams see a 12 personnel package, roll out their base defense, then you're going to have consistent mismatches with linebackers on Mark Andrews and or Isaiah Likely. I like the Ravens chances in those situations. The Ravens are going to be able to run and pass the ball. I hope they have a nice like 40, 60, 60, 40, or 50, 50 split off of these packages where they're keeping defenses guessing, man, because if if the Ravens keep teams off balance with this personnel package with Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews as like bona fide, legit dog weapons in the passing game that can also block, you know, and you can throw Charlie Kohler in that mix as well if you want to give some snaps off to one or the other. You know, Charlie Kohler can catch passes as well, was excellent in college, and then put a, a bunch of muscle on in the offseason to beef up as a run blocker as well. You know, I love these three tight ends for the Ravens. The 12 personnel is going to be absolutely deadly to opposing defenses, and I hope we get to see it unveiled uh, in six days against the Kansas City Chiefs. At number five, um, Bo Braid, he addressed the media today, and he talked about how he found out he made the roster. Here's what he had to say. Practice, uh, our, la our practice after the uh, Green Bay game, and um, Eric came up to me, and he was like, you had a pretty good preseason. I was like, yes, sir, thank you. You know, I'm still nervous, you know, uh, haven't made a team yet. And then he just broke the news. He was like, congratulations, you've made the three-man roster. And I was like, I thanked him. I appreciate it. I gave him a, a hug. And then, um, of course, when I got home, I had to tell the parents. So. Uh, that was a great experience. They started crying, but that was, a, that was a nice experience. So yesterday, Eric DaCosta talked about how that preseason game against the Packers was basically a joke, and um, the only guy that wasn't joking around was Bo Bray. Like, he came to play and uh, got all the snaps, got all the work, and just kept smacking people in the run game, covering guys in the pass game. Bo Braid was not messing around and really stood out. Eric Tacosta said that he specifically, he didn't just earn it. Like he went out there and took the roster spot. It's obviously a great story because he played college at Maryland. He was a uh, Maryland product in high school just down the road before that. So he gets to go ahead and enter his pro career in Baltimore and stay here in Maryland. Excellent, excellent story. And then he talks about how his parents crying and everything. Like that's a dream come true right there. So Tyler Huntley's back with the Ravens. Mark and Linderbaum are back at practice. And the 12 personnel the Ravens are about to use could be nightmares for opposing defensive coordinators. Bo Braid making the squad. 
Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed today's content, if you got any value, make sure to leave the video a like. It really does help out the channel. Thank you all for tuning in. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all, and we'll see you in the next video. He ran me over.